Hello everyone, I am Santosh Keji, Assistant Professor, Department of Mechanical Engineering, MIT, Mysore. In the last session, we studied the theoretical concepts of the chapter Compound Stresses which comes under Mechanics of Material. Now, we will extend the concepts and we shall see how we can find the stresses on inclined plane when the given condition is a biaxial stress system with shear. So, before going into the topic stresses on inclined plane, first let us understand what is the meaning of biaxial stress with shear. Suppose if you are having an object like this, on the object if you are applying the stresses or the force in only one direction then the stress system is called as uniaxial stress system. So, an uniaxial stress system is a one where the stress is applied in only one direction. It may be either sigma x or it may be along sigma or along y direction. So, if you are applying the stress along x axis or if you are applying stress only along y axis then such type of system we are going to call it as an uniaxial stress system where uni represents single and axial is the direction. Similarly, for a given member if you are applying the stresses in two different directions. like this. So, here I have taken this member on the member we are applying the normal stress along the x axis and also the normal stress along y axis. So, if you apply the stresses in two different directions, if you apply the normal stress in two different direction then we can call such system as a biaxial stress system. If I take a member on the member, if I apply the normal stresses that is sigma x and sigma y in two different directions along with that if I apply a shear stress on a member then such member are called as a biaxial stress system with shear. So, these are the different types of stress system we are having in case of two dimensional member. So, again I am going to define these three systems. So, the stress systems are basically classified into three types. One is called as an uniaxial stress system, second one is called as a biaxial stress system and the last one is called as a biaxial stress system with a shear. So, we can call a given system as a uniaxial stress system if the normal stress are applied only in one direction. That is you can apply the normal stress either in x direction or in y direction such system they will be called as an uniaxial stress system. Similarly, if you are applying the normal stresses in two different directions, here I am applying the normal stress in x direction along with that I am applying the normal stress in y direction. So, when you apply the stresses normal stresses in more than one direction or in two different directions then the given stress system is called as a biaxial stress system. Similarly, along with the biaxial stress if you are applying the shear stresses then such kind of system is called as a biaxial stress system with shear one of such diagram is shown here. Now, when a given system is a biaxial stress system with shear for that we shall try to find 
what will be the stress on an inclined plane. If you observe this diagram, here the stresses are applied along the plane BC and along the plane AD and along the plane CD and along the plane AB. So all the four planes, they are either horizontal in direction or it is in vertical orientation. But when you are applying the stresses in either horizontal plane or vertical plane, we should find what will be the stress that will be induced in the inclined plane. So on the inclined plane, the normal stress induced will be called as sigma n and the parallel stress induced in the inclined plane, it is called as tau t and we need to find the expression for sigma n and tau t now. In order to find the stress on inclined plane, we have considered one plane which is BE which is inclined at an angle theta with respect to the vertical plane. So with respect to the plane BC, we have considered one inclined plane which is at an angle theta which is measured in counterclockwise direction. So on that inclined plane, let us say the normal stress induced is sigma n and the tangential stress induced is tau t. Now I am going to isolate this triangle BCE separately and I have written it here. So here while writing what I have done is along I have written the stresses, various stresses that will be acting in x direction and various stresses that will be acting in y direction. Suppose if we take sigma x, it will be acting in x direction, I have shown it here. Similarly, the stress tau which is acting along the plane EC, it is also horizontal. So it, I have shown that stress here. Similarly, if you take the stress sigma y, it is acting in vertical direction. So I have shown sigma y along this line. Similarly, if you take the stress tau, which is acting on the plane BC, it is also acting in vertical direction. So I have shown this tau here. Now, what I will do is, I will convert the stresses into forces. We know that stress is nothing but force acting on unit area. So if I convert, if I want to convert the stress into force, then I need to multiply the stress with the cross-sectional area. So when you multiply the stress with the cross-sectional area, we are going to get the force due to that stress. So if I want to get what is the force which is due to the stress sigma x, then I need to multiply this sigma x with the cross-sectional area on which it is acting. So it is acting on a plane BC. So the area of the plane is BC into thickness of this triangle perpendicular to the board which is taken as 1. So BC into 1 will become BC itself. Similarly, this is the tau which is acting along the plane EC. So along the plane AC, we are having the force tau. So it is acting on this area which is EC multiplied by the thickness which is 1. So this will be equals to tau into EC. Similarly, the stress sigma y, it is acting on the plane EC. So it will be equals the force corresponding to sigma y will be equals to sigma y into EC. Similarly, this tau, it is acting on the plane CB. So if I multiply it by length CB into 1, I will get what is the shear force due to this shear stress tau. So here what I have done, I have multiplied each stresses with the corresponding cross-sectional area and I have converted the stresses into force. Then in order to find sigma n and tau t, that is the normal stress which is acting along the line, along the plane BE and 
the tangential stress acting along the plane BE, I have considered the x and y axis in such a way that the x axis will be coinciding with the plane BE and y axis will be perpendicular to the plane BE. Now we can see that sigma n will be the stress that is acting along y direction and tau t is the stress that is acting parallel to the x axis. So if you find the stress acting parallel to the x axis that stress will represent tau t which is nothing but the tangential stress and sigma n it represents the normal stress acting on the plane BE and it will be acting in the direction YY. So first let us try to find the expression for sigma n which represents the normal stress on the inclined plane B. So first we will try to find the expression for the normal stress which is acting on an inclined plane B E. So it is denoted by sigma n. We know that the normal stress formula is given by load divided by cross sectional area. So to get the normal stress n I should consider the force that are acting along the axis PYY and I should divide it by the area BE. So the area of the plane BE. Now I will get what are the various forces that are acting in the direction of YY. So here along YY we do not get any direct forces that are acting over there but if you see this sigma x into bc tau into ec it is inclined it is inclined to xx at certain angle similarly these two forces tau into cb and sigma y into ec these two forces they are inclined to y axis at certain angle so if this angle found to be theta. If this angle happens to be theta then by using the geometry of the figure we can write this angle as 90 minus theta and this inclination of this force with respect to the line xx can be written as theta. So here if this is the x x axis and if this happens to be the y i axis then the line which carries sigma x into b c and tau into e c they are inclined at an angle of 90 minus theta. Similarly the line which carries sigma y into e c and tau into b c this is inclined with respect to x x at an angle theta. Now resolve these two forces along y axis. So when I resolve these two forces along the y axis I will get both in the upward direction and the component of these two forces along yy will be so sigma x into bc so the component of this force along yy will be equals to sin of 90 minus theta. Similarly if I write the component of the force tau into ec along y y axis then I will get it as tau into ec multiplied by cos of 90 minus theta. Similarly if you write the force the component of the force sigma y into ec along 
y by axis then sorry then similarly if i write the component of the force sigma y into ec along y y axis then i will get it as sigma y into ec multiplied by sin theta plus if i write the component of the force tau into bc along y y axis then i will get the force as tau into bc multiplied by sin theta so these are the component of the various forces that will be acting in the direction yy and i am going to divide it by the area of the plane be so the area of the plane be will be equals to length be multiplied by the thickness which i we have taken it as 1 so the cross sectional area of be will be equals to the length be into 1 now sigma x into bc i am going to keep it as it is the sin of 90 minus theta by making use of astc rule we can write it as cos theta plus tau into ec the term sin of 90 minus theta by making use of astc rule it can be written as cos theta plus sigma y into ec into sin theta divided plus tau into bc into sin theta whole thing divided by be now we know that from the basic algebra that so that is if in the nominator if you are having the summation of more than 2 to 3 terms like a plus b plus c plus d and in the denominator if you are having only one term then this can be written as a by e plus b by e plus c by e plus d by e so by making use of this basic rule of mathematics i can simplify the above equation so by using this i can simplify the above equation as sigma x into bc divided by be into cos theta plus tau into we are having ec divided by be into cos theta plus sigma y into ec divided by be into sin theta plus tau into bc divided by be into sin theta so here if you see this equation in this equation you can see that in every term we are having one constant that is bc by e ic by be and ec by be and bc by be so let us try to replace these two terms by using the triangle bce so if i consider the triangle b c e here we can relate the sides bc divided by be bc divided by be by the trigonometric function cos theta similarly the term ec divided by be it can be related by the term sin theta so wherever in this equation we are going to find bc divided by be there we are going to replace it by 
cos theta and wherever we get the term ec divided by be we are going to replace it by sin theta so the above equation by making use of these two terms i can write it as sigma x into in place of bc by be i will write it as cos theta into cos theta plus tau into in place of ec by be i can write it as sin theta into cos theta plus sigma y in place of ec by be i can write sin theta into sin theta plus tau in place of bc by be i can write cos theta into sin theta so in this equation what i am going to do is first i will write the sigma x term so sigma x into cos theta into cos theta it will become cos square theta then i will write sigma y term so sigma y into sin theta into sin theta it will be sin square theta plus and if you see these two equation they are same tau into cos theta sin theta plus tau into cos theta sin theta so this i can write it as tau into 2 times sin theta into cos theta if you use this equation then it will also represents the equation for the normal stress that is acting on the inclined plane but if you want to get the expression for sigma n in standard formula then we need to simplify this equation by making use of the trigonometric formulas so i am going to simplify this equation further so in order to simplify this equation i will be make use of the two main formulas that is if you are having cos square theta by making use of the trigonometric formulas i can write it as 1 minus cos 1 plus cos 2 theta divided by 2 similarly the term sin square theta it can be written as 1 minus cos 2 theta divided by 2 similarly the term 2 sin theta into cos theta it can be written as sin 2 theta so using this trigonometric formulas i can simplify this equation of sigma n so using this equations i can write sigma n equals sigma x into in place of cos square theta i am going to write 1 plus cos 2 theta divided by 2 plus we are having sigma y into in place of sin square theta i am going to write it as 1 minus cos 2 theta divided by 2 then i will keep tau as it is and in place of 2 sin theta into cos theta i am going to replace it by sin 2 theta in order to get the expression for sigma n in standard form we can simplify this equation further by bringing sigma x inside the bracket and sigma y inside the bracket so when i get bring the sigma x inside the bracket i will get like this so sigma x divided by 2 plus sigma x divided by 2 into cos 2 theta plus sigma y by 2 plus into minus minus so sigma y by 2 into cos 2 theta plus tau into sin 2 theta now i am going to rearrange the terms which are here to get the standard form 
so first i will write these two so first we are having sigma x by 2 plus sigma y by 2 there if i take 1 by 2 common then i will be left with sigma x plus sigma y plus we are having here sigma x by 2 into cos theta here we are having minus sigma y by 2 into cos 2 theta. So, in this two equation we can observe that we are having cos 2 theta in common. So, we can take cos 2 theta common in these two terms. So, when I take cos 2 theta in common I will be left with sigma x minus sigma y by 2 into cos of 2 theta. Then I will be left with only this term which is tau into sin of 2 theta. So, this equation represents the expression for the normal stress on an inclined plane BE in standard form. Now, let us try to see how we can get the expression for a tangential stress that is acting on the inclined plane BE. After finding the expression for the normal stress acting on the inclined plane BE, now we shall find the expression for the tangential stress acting on the same inclined plane BE. So, to find the tangential stress which is denoted by tau t, we need to consider what is the various forces that will be acting parallel to the line xx. So, we need to consider all the forces which are acting along the axis xx and I should divide it by the area of the inclined plane BE. To get the various forces that are acting in xx direction, we can take the help of this diagram. So, if you see this diagram along y axis, we can get the component of the forces sigma x BC tau into EC and sigma y EC and tau into CB. Suppose if I resolve these two forces along x axis, then we will get these two forces acting in downward direction and they will be having a component of cos of 90 minus theta. So, if I write the force sigma x into BC, its component along x axis will be having cos of 90 minus theta. Similarly, the term tau into EC, it will also have cos of 90 minus theta associated with it as a component that is acting along xx. And if you take these two forces, if I resolve that, we will get the component of these two forces acting in upward direction along xx and they will be having cos theta in common. So, the next force along xx axis we are having is since it is acting in upward direction, I will be taking it as negative. So, sigma y into ec it is multiplied by cos theta and the last force is tau into cb and if I resolve this along xx axis, I will get cos theta since it is acting in upward direction, we are writing it with a negative sign and I am going to divide it by the area of the inclined plane BE which is BE into 1. Now, I am going to simplify this equation. So, this will be equals to sigma x into BC in place of cos of 90 minus theta, I can write it as sin theta by making use of ASTC rule, then we are having tau into EC, the cos of 90 minus theta by making use of ASTC rule, I can write it as sin theta minus sigma y into EC into cos theta minus tau into CB into cos theta divided by BE. Again, by making use of the 
algebraic rule that is if you are having more than 3 to 4 terms summation at the nominator and if you are having one term at the denominator then this can be written as a by e plus b by e plus c by e plus d by e. So by making use of this rule this above equation I can write it as sigma x into bc divided by be into sin theta plus tau in the nominator we are having ec I am going to divide it by be into sin theta minus sigma y into in the nominator we are having ec that I am going to divide it by be into cos theta minus we are having tau into nominator we are having bc I am going to divide it by be into cos theta. Now by making use of this triangle BCE we can write in place of BC by BE as cos theta and EC by BE it can be replaced by sin theta. So by replacing these two term by cos and sin in this equation we get it as sigma x in place of BC by BE I will write cos theta into sin theta plus tau into in place of EC by BE I can write sin theta into sin theta minus sigma y into in place of EC by BE I will replace sin theta so sin theta into cos theta minus tau into in place of BC by BE I will write cos theta. So cos theta into cos theta. So sigma tau t tau t will be equals to first I am going to write the sigma x component which is sigma x into cos theta into sin theta then I will write the sigma y component that is minus sigma y into cos theta into sin theta then we are having two tau components one is minus tau into cos square theta and the last one is plus tau into sin square theta. So in this two terms we are having cos theta into sin theta as common so I will take it outside. So if I take cos theta into sin theta outside I will be having sigma x minus sigma y into cos theta into sin theta then I will take minus tau outside. So if I take minus tau outside I will be left with cos square theta minus sin square theta. So by making use of the basic trigonometric formulas I can write cos theta into sin theta as sin 2 theta divided by 2 similarly cos square theta minus sin square theta it can be written as cos 2 theta. So by making use of these two basic formulas I can write the above equation of tau t as sigma x minus sigma y into in place of cos theta into sin theta I will replace it by sin 2 theta divided by 2 minus tau into in place of cos square theta minus sin square theta I will replace it by cos 2 theta. So in standard form if I rearrange the terms 
I will get the equation for the tangential stress in standard form like this. So, sigma x minus sigma y by 2 into sin 2 theta minus tau into cos 2 theta. So, this equation represents the expression for the tangential stress which is acting on an inclined plane which is inclined at an angle theta for a biaxial stress system.